long, long time. I'm so honored to have him here today. His name is Dr. Wooly J. Richardson, DDS, and he practiced holistic dentistry. And the reason why I invited him over is because in nursing, and a lot of nursing students is not going to know this, and a lot of professional nurses won't know this, but a lot of the ailments that we're seeing even coming into just the ER to start with, because we're going to see it throughout the hospital, but just that first ER visit, you'll see a lot of this right there in the ER. And Dr. Uh, Richardson is going to go over some things that you're going to see that you think may not be dental related, but they may be. Go ahead, doctor. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. Nice to meet you guys over this technology. Uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here with Diane Anderson, RN, who is uh, who's setting up this skill snack. I like that title because what she's doing is believing that she can actually help you to learn bits and, bits and pieces of information at a time that can be beneficial to your practice, to your to what you do, okay? So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I call whole holistic dentistry, or sometimes I call it whole body dentistry. But holistic dentistry, first of all, is not a specialty. We get that straight. It's more of a philosophy of practice. And the philosophy is simply that the whole body works as a whole. Just for this uh, particular skill snack, we're going to just talk about some of the things that may come into the emergency room where people may show up in the emergency room with, with, with a chief complaint of, of some things that may have a dental underlying causative factor that may be some causative factor dentally. I'll start with um, one of the common things that people come in with is chest pain. And probably most of the time or oftentimes when people come in with chest pain, yes, they have a heart condition going on. And by all means, you have to rule that out first. But have you ever had to, uh, uh, been involved with the situation where all the medical tests have been evaluated and the person's having chest pain and you really just can't figure out why? Well, sometimes what happened is that person can have severe muscle spasms deep in the right in the uh, left shoulder that can actually refer pains to the chest if though the person's having a heart attack. Okay. It can also refer pain down the arm and so forth. Usually not the jaw, but down the arm, especially if it, it's if there's an underlying muscular problem in the right shoulder. Now, this is what can happen. Sometimes um, severe pain in the right shoulder can be triggered by stress, for example, but by way of facial expression, because the teeth on the opposite side of the mouth, which would be the right, if the right side of the mouth is in dysfunction, where the teeth are in dysfunction, meaning that they are out of balance, severely out of balance, and a person may have had stress to trigger that imbalance more severely, they can actually generate muscle spasm in the shoulder. And uh, by all means, now you first have to rule out any heart condition. Of course, you got to do the EKGs and so on, okay? But sometime when you can't figure out what's going on, you may want to consider uh, that maybe it's a deep muscular problem that can be triggered by the mouth. Now, there are a few clues that can help you. One of the clues is that the person may have um, sinus congestion on the opposite side of the chest, which would be the right side. On the right side, the right nostril may be closed, for example, and also they may have some discomfort in the right leg, especially in the knee down into the calf area. They may have pain in the leg as well. Okay, that can be triggered by a, a dental malocclusion, meaning that the teeth are not um, connecting together as they should be, which can actually generate spasm. That's one thing that you may see. Now, of course, sometimes people come in with an obvious dental situation where they have swollen, swole, swollen in the jaws and so forth, and they may have abscess tooth. You see that as well in the emergency room. And oftentimes, what would be indicated, if you don't have a dentist on staff, what may be indicated is, of course, uh, pain medication and antibiotics, okay? But let me just mention a couple other things that may happen where there's an underlying dental issue. Sometimes people can come in with severe headaches, so of course, severe headaches, you got to rule out a number of things uh, for severe headaches, including things like meningitis and all those types of things. But sometimes you can rule all those things out and you can't really find what's going on. And sometimes what you will may be able to find is that the person, if you take a little bit of history, they may be a, a severe clincher. What a clincher is, is a person who holds their teeth tight together all the time, and they may be a frowning person who frowns all the time. That can actually trigger severe headaches, okay? So sometimes you want to do that. And you can also, as part of the, the history, you want to see if the person has has been to the dentist and if the dentist has said that they have a, a bite issue, for example. There are a few other things that I'll mention. And, and by the way, I like the skill snack because you take a little bit at a time. It's like snacking, <laughs> right? I'll mention one other thing that sometimes can show up. 
A, pe- a person can show up with severe stomach pain, for example. You can have stomach f- pain triggered by a spasm in your right shoulder. If the spasm is deep enough in the shoulder, you can get come up. Um, you know, we can be have the knowledge to look at something and um, two different people can see two different things. For example, if you look at this picture, you some people say, well, that's a rabbit. Another person might say, no, it's a duck laying on its back. The truth is, it's probably both. It's depending on where you, how you look at things. But anyway, we can look at a situation and two different people can see two different things and they both may be right in a degree. But so sometimes when you're looking at things, you have to look at all the other possibilities as well. Uh, so again, holistic dentistry is kind of a way of looking at the body and how the somatonaptic system affect other organs and organ systems in the body and so forth. So just remember this, when you've exhausted all of your, okay, so that's my skill snack for today. We will get back with you later and we will give you another skill snack. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Richardson, for coming coming on the show today and, and giving us a lot of knowledge. And hopefully you'll come back again and share more with us because I know there's a whole lot of stuff that we're seeing in the hospital that even I found out way after a decade of being into nursing. And it's now a little bit, slightly over two decades. I don't want to tell my age. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we're going to see a lot of stuff that's really dental related. Um, and he can share a lot of knowledge on that because that's stuff that that's not yet made it quite to textbooks yet on the medical side or the nursing side in terms of how we're being taught in schools at this time. Okay, guys, so don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button so that you can get more new updated information and um, hope to see you soon. Okay, I look forward to being with you guys again soon, okay? Okay.